President Biden is hosting French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife Brigitte for an official state visit. There you see them uh, out in front of the White House. First Lady there, Jill Biden. Joe Biden there in his trademark aviator glasses greeting the French President and his wife. This is the first state visit of the Biden presidency after the pandemic, and uh, it goes to France. Emmanuel Macron, now the only French president to have two state visits with two different presidents. Uh, these two leaders, you can see, all smiles this morning. This afternoon, they spoke about the close relationship between France and the United States, as well as their commitment to defending Ukraine against Russian aggression. Here's what they had to say. I'm prepared to speak with Mr. Putin if, in fact, there is an interest in him deciding he's looking for a way to end the war. He hasn't done that yet. If that's the case, in consultation with my French and my NATO friends, I'll be happy to sit down with Putin to see what he wants, has in mind. He hasn't done that yet. So for more, let's bring in ABC's Elizabeth Schulze, who was inside the room during that meeting. Elizabeth, first on what President Biden just said. Uh, that there is no talks in the offing between him and Vladimir Putin. Uh, is, is that, is there any daylight there, or is the United States essentially standing pat until Putin caves in? You know, Terry, President Biden made it pretty clear. He said that until President Putin is showing signs that he really is willing to end this war, President Biden is not going to sit down and talk to him. He said he does not have plans to talk to Putin at this point. But he said if there is a willingness to take those steps to stop in this aggression, he would be all ears. Now, of course, we haven't seen that on the ground in Ukraine. That's not at all the message that President Putin has been sending. And this does put President Biden a little bit at odds with President Macron, who he's been standing side by side with all day here at the White House. We've heard President Macron say that he wants peace negotiations to move forward if possible. He wants to find a way for there to be a peaceful resolution in Ukraine. And right now, the President Biden said he's not seeing that path at the moment. He's, he's open to that situation. But right now, that contact hasn't happened. And Elizabeth, if I can follow up, M Macron has certainly been uh, active in, in pushing or hoping for uh, negotiations to begin. Do you feel that, that, uh, that he wanted to get close to President Biden on this? Do you think there's any sense that behind the scenes... Uh, Macron is carrying some kind of message. He says he's going to meet Putin in the next few days. Do you think he's carrying a message from the American president? Well, there's no doubt that if President Macron is going to speak to Putin in a couple days, it would be hard to imagine, Terry, that the conversation with President Biden didn't come up as part of that in some way. And we heard President Macron was asked a similar question of what would it take to get to these peaceful negotiations, and he sounded to have a little bit more of a plan. You know, Terry, we've seen Macron try to act as sort of the de facto moderator here. He's been kind of the voice of the EU when it comes to these negotiations, and he's really tried to take the stand that there is a path forward at the same time you know reiterating that one of the most critical pieces is for the aid to continue that, that there is no near term this doesn't look like it's going to be a conversation in the near term even if he does speak to putin in the near term we heard both president biden and president macron talk about the aid, the need for additional aid especially as we're heading into these winter months here and finally, Elizabeth, I want to draw on your, on your business expertise because uh, French President Macron came to the United States with an agenda to back down the United States a little bit on one of Biden's signature accomplishments. That's the, the Inflation Reduction Act, which had billions of dollars of subsidies for men, American manufacturers of next generation uh, energy, uh, essentially uh, bell, uh, batteries and cells and such, and chips as well. And the Europeans say that these subsidies are, are really harming their industry. Do you think he made any progress on that? What I heard was President Biden essentially say, well, we can tweak that legislation a bit, but we are going to be our own supply chain. Uh, and yes. as I understood it, that was basically we're going to keep subsidizing these next generation industries. It's a little bit of a tough line there for President Biden to walk because, Terry, we've been talking about it on the show, this push that the White House has been making to bring supply chains back, to invest in companies here in the U.S., to incentivize them and subsidize them to bring those production hubs here so that the supply chain isn't as reliant on international trade. And that means that, com that other countries, including in the EU, could get hurt. And that's the complaint that we've heard from President Macron. It does sound like there was maybe a little bit of progress when it comes to the, the, the demands from Macron 
able to amend some of the provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act. We heard President Biden admit this was a massive piece of legislation, hundreds of billions of dollars, and perhaps there's a way to make sure it can be carved out so that the trading allies are not hurt in the process. All right, so maybe he gets a little something at the end of the day there. Elizabeth Shelsey at the White House, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.